Welcome students and learners of all varieties. I know uh, we just finished chapter 20 and we're probably, if you're in my class, you, you're learning, uh, oh, you, you just got a test, but you gotta keep moving. No rest for the wicked, as they say, and truly those who study organic must be the souls of the damned. So, must keep pushing through. Fortunately, this chapter is just a, really an extension of the last one. Chapter 21 is carboxylic acid derivatives. So it's one's a derivative where we start with our carboxylic acid and they can be turned into uh, these various functional groups through acid or base hydrolysis. So these guys include acid halides. So halides, so I already did acid chloride before. Esters. Talk about those. Fish, Fischer esterification. Amides. Amides. But here's two ones that we didn't really talk about before. Uh, nitriles are considered part of this, even though uh, they don't have the carbonyl functionality. But remember, we could easily turn nitrile into an acid. So that's included. And this is the only one that's really semi new, and that's an anhydride. So anhydride is kind of like you combine an ester to another carbonyl. So anhydride is essentially two carboxylic acids uh, react with each other causing a dehydration. Thus the anhydride removal of water. So First, we'll talk about how we name these, and we're going to kind of go. Uh, what's that? No, I'll deal with that later. But uh, so we'll go with these systematically, one by one. So like, we'll start with, with esters. Esters, so now an ester is an alk, would be like alkyl carboxylate. This is the, what the functional two term is. But so how do we typically name these guys? Uh, we name these guys. We have to say what we have the large, the largest functional group is typically the carbonyl. We name this guy as the main group with the chain, the E, the E drops off and goes to the O A T. Kind of like we usually OAT, kind of like acetate, would technically be ethanoate. Ethanoate. And we kind of talked about that when we talked about what happens to an acid when you react it with a base, you form like, oh, a ionic compound, ethanoic, you'd say ethanoic acid with base would be sodium ethanoate instead of sodium acetate. This guy becomes a functional group that goes in front. So for example, this guy would be methyl 
Asinellate. The methyl says, oh, that's attached to the alkyl group. Or oh, that, that alkyl group is attached to the ester. Okay, so so there's a one class of esters that often happens is cyclic esters, often referred to as lactones. They are what happen. A lot of these guys are formations of what happened of the dehydro the Fischer esterification the intramolecular Fischer esterification of a carboxylic acid with alcohol. So like, for example, this guy, would be 4-hydroxy-eutanoic acid. But reversibly, an acid that's going to form a five member ring that's a cyclic lactone. What is this? Let's say 4-hydroxybutanoic acid lactone. So those are guys that can form and will form as under certain conditions. And there is actually a problem on the homework for last chapter involving these guys. Five-member and six-member rings are particularly stable. And they're actually preferred and tropically bringing back our thermodynamics because even though there's a lot more free rotation in the singular structure, the, the lactone forms two molecules, the lactone and water. So it actually increases the overall entropy. Now amides, uh, so amides are, remember, our carbonyl with our amine. Now, they're not really strongly basic and they're not really strongly, I mean, they are by themselves rather weak acids. They are, they, you could donate a proton because, I mean, then you can shift back and forth and put the negative on the oxygen. So these are guys are going to be, you can imagine this structure. So we're going to put NH minus I mean, they're weakly, very weak acids because of this resonance going on. But strong acids will pro, strong acids will actually pronate the carbonyl. We'd rather pronate the carbonyl than uh, pronate the amine, which is actually surprising because you think, oh, amines, amines are uh, usually basic. Well, let's think about that. Why might you pronate the carbonyl? So if you pronated the amine, you have NH3 plus there's not really any resonance we can do. But if you pronate the carbonyl, We still have resonance. So that's not really stable. 
not really stable you're like oh but you can see oh resonance is possible putting once again formation of the mind so you see right there like this resonance is what makes this amine weakly this amide weakly acidic and it's what makes that the carbonyl more basic than the amine itself now <clears throat> so we can we can classify them into three well yeah three categories we can have our uh primary amides and it's the, the the categories of amides are based on what is coming off the nitrogen primary amides or amides how we want to call it essentially has only that single carbon coming off there so our secondary would have out one functional group coming off of the, the nitrogen and tertiary would be fully substituted amine so that'd be either n substituted or nn di substituted amine So uh, when we name these guys, instead of remember as an acid, let's say that if that was ethanoic acid and we change it, the, the E, we lose the E, goes to just kind of like how we did with the mean, just goes to a mine. The name like, so that ethanamide. Now, when we get this, we have to remember to put our functional groups where we say this is substituted with an N. Like if that's a methyl group, it'd be N methyl ethanamide or ethanamide. I gotta check that. Let's see. Okay, let's see. It's not in my notes. Weird words. I'm carboxamide. I don't know. Now, now I'm gonna just forget about that. But okay. So remember when we had the esters? When we had a cyclic ester, it was a lactone. Well, we can actually form cyclic amides. Same process. Same process where you were essentially the acid plus the, uh, the mean dehydrates to form cyclic amide or amid, which we call if the ones were lactones, this is lactams. So cyclic lactam uh, and So like so 
Now, let's see. Okay. So, yeah. So when we name the lactones, name lactams, you're basically naming it how it was uncyclic and then adding the lactone or lactam to the end. So this one would have been four amino butanoic acid. And then we had to add lactam to say, oh, it's cyclized on itself. Saying that we started from that and then we cyclized. So when we did this with the ester, that was four hydroxy butanoic acid lactone. So you just label the fact it is cyclized with by, by adding an extra little word onto the end. Now, uh, nitriles. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the properties of nitriles. We talked about nitriles. Anything with a cyano group is our nitrile. Remember that that in the presence of water and acid and base, they will slowly but surely oxidize. This is actually a slower process where the water and acid or base. First, they technically form an amine or amide, which is part of the reason why we include this in here. And then you keep going in the presence of acid, keep going to the acid. But there's a way to work our way backwards. We can work our way backwards, and we'll talk more about this later. But so we can go from here. Remember, if I add ammonia and heat, we can essentially well push it back to the amide. And then Said we'll talk about this reaction later, but with this convenient oxidant, well, actually no, it's going to be it's going to have to be a reductant, some type, but it, that can fully change it back to the cyano group. Well, so. It is possible to undo the oxidation we learned in the last chapter, where we go all the way to this. But, so that is kind of why we still include the cyano group on our on their carboxylic acid derivatives, even though you, they aren't abundantly obvious that they're carboxylic acid derivatives. So now some little like facts about nitriles, some like properties. Nitriles by themselves are not very basic. So they're not very basic. You'd expect, I mean, the means are basic, but nitriles by themselves are not very basic. Probably the weaker base. When it comes to naming them, if it that is the main functional group, the E, lose the E and goes to nitrile. If it is not a, the most important group, which is probably not most of the time, it is a cyano. Functional.
So depending on where it is. So like. That would be propanonitrile. But if I suddenly put, uh, say, suddenly now it's the, uh, it'd be what? Butanal. So it'd be two cyan, well, sorry, three cyano butanal. So it's all depend on whether, remember, we have something more important on there. Okay. So acid halides. Acid halides, we've, we've kind of looked at them there, pretty darn reactive. When we go to name them, we're going to have our we're going to change our name to the OYL acid uh, the OYL halide so so like that guy would be ethanol ethanol chloride I know the, the book doesn't talk right about them right away because they aren't really a, I mean, yeah, they're basic, but only because they are so darn reactive. But the chloride itself doesn't actually play a part of that. It's just a good leaving group. And it jumps, the book jumps straight to the acid anhydrides, which acid anhydride is just essentially anhydride is without water when you have two acids together. And of course, in the presence of water, you're going to have this reversible reaction where you're going to break it back down into your two acids again. So there's often a reaction where you use an acid anhydride to make it work, and then how do you get rid of them at the end? Get rid of these very reactive intermediates. Only you just add some water and quench the reaction as it decomposes it to our. Sorry. Oh, jeez. Can't believe I screwed that up. As it decomposes that back to carboxylic acid. Now. Times. Now, diacids will typically uh, cyclize to form anhydrides, uh, especially if it's a five to six membered ring. But whatever the name was, uh, typically you're just going to whatever you have acid and then add anhydride onto it. Right? So Ethanoic acid anhydride. But the problem is when you have a mixed anhydride, you have mixed anhydride, you have to name both. I say, name with both acids. Let's see. What are they? Methyl, like if I had. Ethyl ethanoic acid and hydride. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and so and when we go to name these guys, 
and we go to name these guys and figure out which which functional group of these all these derivatives which of these guys take precedence because remember sometimes you have sometimes you have uh, acid multiple things in there amino acid by itself remember is a carboxylic acid and an amine they have a bunch of stuff different stuff as they, they link together they form amides as well and so remember when we name these guys acids take precedence followed by esters the amides We don't include uh, anhydrides in there, but then it's aldehydes, ketones. Alcohols. Amines. Multiple bonds. So how, how, what's the easy way to remember this? So it's first off, when it comes to naming, the highest oxidation state typically wins. Second thing, when it comes to naming, being electronegativity wins. So if I'm comparing, say, amid to an acid, the nitrogen is less electronegative than the oxygen. So ester and acid are both ahead of that. Same way as amine is behind alcohol, because they're both one oxidation state onto the carbon. Then the third most important factor is where they are in the molecule. If they are at the end of the molecule, they are taking precedence. So acids are better than esters. Esters are continuing the chain. Aldehydes are better than ketones because ketones are in the middle of the molecule, not at the end. So, so that's one convenient way to remember these guys. Now, as you look at physical properties of these guys, like boiling points and melting points. One point slash melting points. Now this is a little surprising, but amides actually will have the greatest boiling point, which are followed by acids. And acids are actually somewhat equivalent to the nitriles. Which are somewhat similar to the alcohols. followed by then esters and acid chlorides. Well, esters are approximately. Now, you gotta look at what is present in there. Amid, the, the, the reason why amides are so strong is because most Amides have the ability to make really strong hydrogen bonds. They're really, uh, really strong hydrogen bonds. And if you're a primary amine, you actually have two hydrogens to make far more hydrogen bonds than, say, a, uh, than an acid would. Now, keep in mind, amides primary amides are stronger that have a higher boiling point than secondary which are stronger than tertiary where tertiary is not going to have any hydrogen bonds so it's going to lose all of that now nitriles you want to expect that because acids at least can make hydrogen bonds but nitriles you need another molecule to make a hydrogen bond so 
what advantage they have is that they have an incredibly strong dipole. That is not necessarily what you would expect. And that strong dipole actually brings the boiling point up to close to the acids. Now, esters, once again, cannot make a hydrogen bond with themselves unless there's another functional group. Same thing with acid chlorides. You have a strong carbonyl, a lot of inductive effect, but there's no, uh, there's no like OH to a hydrogen bond to. Now, the solubility of these guys, uh, most of these guys are very soluble in, in most organic salt. So they're not really much of a problem. They're gonna have good polarity, but depending on how, how long the chains, they're gonna be pretty soluble in most things. Uh, one note though, when you have acid chlorides and anhydrides, due to their reactivity, it is not suggestible you X nay on the nucleophilic solvents. So you do not want to use things like alcohols water or etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera, because what did we just talked about last chapter. You can use this group to do a to form an ester in the presence of an alcohol. You could also actually do that here with the acid and hydride. Water is going to knock these guys back to the carboxylic acid. So you do not want nucleophilic solvent because these are so reactive. Now, esters, amides, and nitriles, because are mildly water soluble even though uh even though they have the hydrogen bonding and the very polar they're mild only mildly water soluble but they will dissolve so all those properties are very useful now when you look at the ir of these guys the ir of these guys uh on most of these guys, you should expect a carbonyl stretch, all except for the nitrile. So the, but let's, let's look, so the carbonyl stretch. In the aldehyde, look at where the respective places are there. Ketone, acid, ester, Amid, acid, halide, and anhydride. How do these guys differ? Well, 1725, 35. This, let's see. Well, sorry, acid is also 1710. Ester jumps up. The amide is a big drop, 1640 to 1680. Acid chloride is a big jump up. And acid anhydride is also 1800 to 1750. Sorry, seven. I think I wrote down 50. 17. So you've got these guys, which have the uh, funky groups, very reactive ones are really high, and it's very low. Ester and acids are all kind of intermixed in there. However, with some of these guys, you should expect a OH stretch. 
wait, OH at 2500, 3500. So how would you tell an acid from a ketone? You look for that stretch, like the NH stretch. 3,200 to 3,500. Sometimes multiple stretches. Take 35. And of course, there's the nitrile. Nitrile doesn't have any of those, but what it does have is the nitrile stretch. 2,200. That guy's a dead giveaway if you have a nitrile. So now the idea here is that the more strained the carbonyl is, higher the stretch. So aldehyde, which is a, is a, in the middle when you get the uh, put, put an ester on there. Carbon, that carbon chain is maybe like pushing that and straining that ring, uh, straining the thing. The nitrogen is actually going to be less strained. So it drops down, but the acid, the, the big halide or the conjugation needed for that functional group with anhydride causes that strain, causes that to shoot up. But all these guys, you can tell a lot about my IR. Even more, ketone. Now, most of these guys, uh, uh, not by ketone, but proton NMR. Most of these guys will be similar to the ketones. The, the hydrogens will be similar to the ketones. You won't be able to tell, let's say, what it's attached to. So most of these guys, the alpha hydrogen. So like, all you can tell is really this is attached there. So, but you also should see alcohols. You should see that if an alcohol, alcohol, the things you can tell that, and you can tell, oh, like CH. So, so. There's a certain, there's a, this is a smallish stretch. So you can tell, but this is very similar to having been right next to a ketone. This is a larger stretch for the esters and the amides. See a huge stretch here, huge chip there, but it's very similar to being next to an alcohol. Now in the, uh, NH bond in the amide could be anywhere between five and eight ppm, and it probably broad. And the only one difference nitrile, the hydrogen alpha is about two and a half. The proton isn't always the most useful for telling the functional groups there. You can usually tell there is a strong functional group adjacent to that hydrogen, or there is a weak functional group adjacent to that hydrogen, or there's, I mean, there's no functional group, or there is a moderate one. Ketone, I would consider the carbonyl group is a moderate shift, and the alcohol is a large shift. So we can usually, now the big game changer is carbon-13. Is the carbon 13, depending on what you have, you see a huge hit. So, on most of these carboxylic acid derivatives, so ketone, 
an aldehyde, these guys were 200 plus. Carbon carbon double bonds at best were like like 150 to like 110. But so with all of our these guys, the carbonyl group is going to be between 170 and 180. So if you see it below 200, but above 150, it's typically uh, using the 100 180 region is typically you could have an a carboxylic acid, you could have an ester, you could have an amide. You could probably have an acid chloride, depending on your solvent. You could have an acid anhydride, depending on your solvent. It all depends. Now, uh, the carbon alpha to this, this carbon, typically going to have see a, a 30 to 40 ppm jump. Pretty big, pretty moderate one, but if you have another carbon here, so you're going to, with esters, with esters, it's uh, oxygen, esters, it's 60 to 80 ppm jump. So it's a huge jump for esters. It's usually a dead giveaway. You're, you, you see, well, I have this guy and a carbon that's shifted way, way down field. It's like, well, maybe it's a nester. As opposed, to, and I don't see an OH stretch. For amides, it acts as equal to nitrogen. You see a much smaller shift, but still it is a significant shift. And nitrile, this carbon sees a That is actually much higher than triple bonds. Triple bonds are usually at 90. But once again, we talked about how polar that is, how polar this is, making it such a high boiling point is also what's causing that to shift so far down the end. So I know that this is a lot of properties and it's a lot of just that we're just building on kind of what we know. We're going to go ahead and probably stop there but before we get into any reactions. It's the first thing we really need to be able to do is recognize these guys. We need to be able to uh, know what properties they have, know kind of how to name them, you know, they kind of understand, we got this polarity here, we got these things that are the same. These guys are all put together because they have all these properties that are the same, or at least similar, that can classify them all together. They're all gonna be building off each other. We're gonna have reactions that goes all one way, reactions that go the other way, some of these reactions we have seen before. We're going to keep seeing them because it's building on what we've already known. Because we've dealt with these guys, even though we haven't specifically had a whole chapter focused on them. So, found this interesting. You found this riveting. Please like, please subscribe. Yada, yada, yada. Either way, I'll catch you next time in the so, uh, seventh circle of hell we know it as organic chemistry.